Well, good morning. It's Tuesday and welcome to our daily prayers. This is a close up of that part of the stained glass window centering right on Christ, who is at the center. And here he is as king. You can see his crown. He's holding the orb and the angels are behind him worshipfully and respectfully. So it looks like Christ as king is one way in which we can look at him. It's interesting, my the church I was vicar at before Christ Church Emmanuel was called Christ the King. And it reminds me he is a good king, a king who cares for his people, a king we can trust. And so when we pray to Jesus, thy kingdom come, what we're praying is that his rule, his kindly rule, his righteous rule will come into our society and we can be workers of that. Christ, our King. Let's pray to him now. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with un one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We're at Luke 5, verse 36. Jesus has just been questioned on practices of fasting, which seem to be more to do with identifying a group than they do with actually genuine wishing to seek God through that religious practice. So Jesus told them this parable. No one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch on an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out and the wineskins will be ruined. No new wine must be poured into new wineskins. And no one after drinking old wine wants the new for they say the old is better. So the illustration, which would have been well known at the time, is that both wine expands if you keep it and wine skins also, when they're new, can expand. But by the time they become old and have expanded, there's no more given them. So if you put new wine into an old wine skin, it literally will burst it. And Jesus is using that in illustration of how his teaching is not going to fit into the religious, rigid religious understanding of the Pharisees. Now, the truth is, um, Jesus talks about new wine, but of course, he was following the heart of the Old Testament. It's not radically new, but more he was connecting with the real issues in the Old Testament, justice and mercy and the gospel is for all. But the practice had become so rigid that Jesus' teaching was going to burst the formal ways the Pharisees were doing it. It's easy for you and me to think sometimes, do we have ways of containing our faith? Where God's sometimes asking, trying to burst out and take us into new areas. Where do we hem God in, whether it be conscious or unconscious? Where can we allow ourselves to be new wineskins? Pause for our prayers now. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.